Prince Philip, the husband of Britain's Queen Elizabeth, was educated at Gordonstown at the instigation of Lord Louis Mountbatten, his uncle, a Rothschild relative who became Britain's admiral of the fleet after World War II ended. Number three, all influential people trapped into coming under the control of the Illuminati, plus the students who had been specially educated and trained, were to be used as agents and placed behind the scenes of all governments as experts and specialists, so they would advise the top executives to adopt policies which would, in the long run, serve the secret plans of the Illuminati One World Conspiracy and bring about the destruction of the governments and religions they were elected or appointed to serve. Do you know how many such men operate in our government at this very time? Rusk, McNamara, Hubert Humphrey, Fulbright, Keekle, and go on and on and on. Number four, perhaps the most vital directive in Weishaupt's plan was to obtain absolute control of the press, at that time the only mass communications media, to distribute information to the public so that all news and information could be slanted so that the masses could be convinced that a one-world government is the only solution to our many and varied problems. Now do you know who owns and controls our mass communications media? I'll tell you, practically all the movie lots in Hollywood is owned by the Laymans, Kuhn Loeb and Company, Goldman Sachs, and other internationalist bankers. All the national radio and TV channels in the nation are owned and controlled by those same internationalist bankers. The same is true of every chain of metropolitan newspapers and magazines, also of the press wire services, such as Associated Press, United Press International, etc. The supposed heads of all those media are merely the fronts for the internationalist bankers who in turn compose the hierarchy of the CFR, today's Illuminati in America. Now can you understand why the Pentagon's press agent Sylvester so brazenly proclaimed that the government has the right to lie to the people? What he really meant was that our CFR-controlled government had the power to lie to and be believed by the brainwashed American people. And let's again go back to the first days of the Illuminati. Because Britain and France were the two greatest world powers in the late years of the 18th century, Weishaupt ordered the Illuminati to foment the colonial wars, including our Revolutionary War, to weaken the British Empire and organize the French Revolution to destroy the French Empire. He scheduled the French Revolution to start in 1789. However, in 1784, a true act of God placed the Bavarian government in possession of evidence which proved the existence of the Illuminati. And that evidence could have saved France if they, the French government, hadn't refused to believe it. Here is how that act of God happened. It was in 1874 that Weishaupt issued his orders for the French Revolution. A German writer named Zwack put it into book form. It contained the entire Illuminati story and Weishaupt's plans. A copy of this book was sent to the Illuminists in France, headed by Robespierre, whom Weishaupt had delegated to foment the French Revolution. The courier was struck and killed by lightning as he rode through Ralliston on his way from Frankfurt to Paris. The police found the subversive documents on his body and turned them over to the proper authorities. After careful study of the plot, the Bavarian government ordered the police to raid Weishaupt's newly organized lodges of the Grand Orient and the homes of his most influential associates. All additional evidence thus discovered convinced the authorities the documents were genuine copies of the conspiracy by which the Illuminati planned to use wars and revolutions to bring about the establishment of a one-world government 
the powers of which they, headed by the Rothschilds, intended to usurp as soon as it was established, exactly in line with the United Nations plot of today. In 1785, the Bavarian government outlawed the Illuminati and closed the lodges of the Grand Orient. In 1786, they published all the details of the conspiracy. The English title of that publication is The Original Writings of the Order and Sect of the Illuminati. Copies of the entire conspiracy were sent to all the heads of church and state in Europe. But the power of the Illuminati, which was actually the power of the Rothschilds, was so great that this warning was ignored. Nevertheless, Illuminati became a dirty word, and it went underground. At the same time, Weishaupt ordered Illuminists to infiltrate into the lodges of blue masonry and form their own secret societies within all secret societies. Only Masons who proved themselves internationalists and those whose conduct proved they had defected from God were initiated into the Illuminati. Thenceforth, the conspirators donned the cloak of philanthropy and humanitarianism to conceal their revolutionary and subversive activities. In order to infiltrate into Masonic lodges in Britain, Weishaupt invited John Robeson over to Europe. Robeson was a high degree Mason in the Scottish Rite. He was a professor of natural philosophy at Edinburgh University and secretary of the Royal Society of Edinburgh. Robeson did not fall for the lie that the objective of the Illuminati was to create a benevolent dictatorship, but he kept his reactions to himself so well that he was entrusted with a copy of Weishaupt's revised conspiracy for study and safekeeping. Anyway, because the heads of state and church in France were deluded into ignoring the warnings given them, the revolution broke out in 1789 as scheduled by Weishaupt. In order to alert other governments to their danger, in 1798, Robeson published a book entitled Proof of a Conspiracy to Destroy All Governments and Religions. But his warnings were ignored, exactly as our American people have been ignoring all warnings about the United Nations and the Council on Foreign Relations, the CFR. Now here is something that will stun and very likely outrage many who hear this. But there is documentary proof that our own Thomas Jefferson and Alexander Hamilton became students of Weishaupt's. Jefferson was one of Weishaupt's strongest defenders when he was outlawed by his government. And it was Jefferson who infiltrated the Illuminati into the then newly organized lodges of the Scottish Rite in New England. Here is the proof. In 1789, John Robeson warned all Masonic leaders in America that the Illuminati had infiltrated into their lodges. And on July 19, 1789, David Pappen, president of Harvard University, issued the same warning to the graduating class and lectured them on the influence Illuminism was acquiring on American politics and religion. And to top it off, John Quincy Adams, who had organized the New England Masonic Lodges, issued his warnings. He wrote three letters to Colonel William L. Stone, a top Mason, in which he exposed how Jefferson was using Masonic Lodges for subversive Illuministic purposes. Those three letters are at this very time in Rittenberg Square Library in Philadelphia. In short, Jefferson, founder of the Democratic Party, was a member of the Illuminati, which at least partly accounts for the condition of the party at this time. And through infiltrations of the Republican Party, we have exactly nothing of loyal Americanism today. That disastrous rebuff at the Congress at Vienna, created by the Tsar of Russia, did not by any means destroy the Illuminati conspiracy. It merely forced them to adopt a new strategy, realizing that the one world idea was, for the moment, killed. The Rothschilds decided 
that to keep the plot alive, they'd have to do it by heightening their control of the money systems of the European nations. Earlier, by a ruse, the outcome of the Battle of Waterloo had been falsified. Rothschild had spread a story that Napoleon had won that battle. That had precipitated a terrific panic on the stock market in England. All stocks had plummeted down to practically zero, and Nathan Rothschild bought all the stocks for virtually a penny on its dollar values. That gave him complete control of the economy of Britain and virtually of all Europe. So immediately after that Congress in Vienna had boomeranged, Rothschild forced Britain to set up a new Bank of England, which he absolutely controlled. Exactly as later, through Jacob Schiff, he engineered our own Federal Reserve Act, which gave the House of Rothschild a secret control of the economy in the United States. But now for a moment, let's dwell on the activities of the Illuminati in the United States. In 1826, one Captain William Morgan decided it was his duty to inform all Masons and the general public what the full truth was regarding the Illuminati, their secret plans and intended objectives, also revealed the identities of the masterminds of the conspiracy. The Illuminati promptly tried Morgan in absentia and convicted him of treason. They ordered one Richard Howard, an English Illuminist, to carry out their sentence of execution as a traitor. Morgan was warned and he tried to escape to Canada, but Howard caught up with him near the border, near the Niagara Gorge, to be exact, where he murdered him. This was verified in a sworn statement made in New York by one Avery Allen to the effect that he heard Howard render his report of the execution to a meeting of Knights Templars in St. John's Hall, New York. He also told how arrangements had been made to ship Howard back to England. That Allen affidavit is on record in New York City archives. Very few Masons and very few of the general public know that general disapproval over that incident of murder caused approximately half of all the Masons in the northern jurisdiction of the United States to secede. Copies of the minutes of the meeting held to discuss that matter are still in existence in safe hands, and that all that secrecy emphasizes the power of the masterminds of the Illuminati to prevent such terrible events of history from being taught in our schools. In the early 1850s, the Illuminati held a secret meeting in New York, which was addressed by a British Illuminist named Wright. Those in attendance were told that the Illuminati was organizing to unite the nihilist and atheist groups with all other subversive groups into an international to be known as communists. That was when the word communist first came into being, and it was intended to be the supreme weapon and scare word to terrify the whole world and drive the terrorized peoples into the Illuminati One World Scheme. This scheme, communism, was to be used to enable the Illuminati to foment future wars and revolutions. Clinton Roosevelt, a direct ancestor of Franklin Roosevelt, Horace Greeley and Charles Dana, foremost newspaper publishers of that time, were appointed to head a committee to raise funds for the new venture. Of course, most of the funds were provided by the Rothschilds. And this fund was used to finance Karl Marx and Engels when they wrote Das Kapital and the Communist Manifesto in Soho, England. And this clearly reveals that communism is not a so-called ideology, but a secret weapon, a bogeyman word to serve the purpose of the Illuminati. Weishaupt